on this computer. All right. Um, so Kelly, while I'm doing the intro, can you manage the chat? I am managing the chat now. All right, perfect. Okay, so um, welcome to the first webinar of the 2019 Ignis season. And um, let's just make sure we all have our mics turned off so we don't get typing noise. Okay, so um, again, welcome. Um, Ignis is the Latin word for spark or ignite, and that's exactly what we're hoping to do today is to ignite your curiosity and to spark your intellect. This webinar series is brought to you by the Office of Educational Technology and Open Education at the Washington State Board for Community and Technical Colleges. And my name is Alyssa Sells, and I am your host today. All right, let's move on. So our topic today is using Badger to award badges in Canvas, and our presenter is Kelly Meeson. And um, we are kind of just continuing on what has become an Ignis tradition. I think Kelly has been our opening presenter for the last, uh, I don't know, three or four years now. So um, a big thank you to Kelly for being here today to share his badging explorations with us and for um, taking that leap of faith and um, jumping in and being our first presenter each time that's really appreciated all right so we have um, oops I went too many slides Sorry. Okay, so um, we've switched web conferencing tools again this year, and before we get started, we're going to do just a very, very brief overview of Zoom, and we'll hit just a couple other housekeeping items, and then I'm going to officially introduce Kelly. So the first thing on our list is to check your audio. If you are experiencing any audio trouble or you don't have a headset or speakers, you can also call in by phone, and the number is in the chat. I'll put it in the chat again. Um, when I'm done and Kelly gets started, but it's 1-699-900-6833, and then you enter the meeting ID, which is 361-298-378, and then the pound, and that will um, get you set up for um, calling in. Okay, on to our next slide. Okay, we are um, having captioned webinars. So um, all of our webinars for the entire season will be captioned and you can access those captions by clicking on the CC button in the Zoom toolbar. And the Zoom toolbar is located um, near the bottom of your screen. There is not a hotkey for those that I could find, um, but if you click that button, um, you'll be able to um, activate the captions there em embedded into um, the Zoom viewer. And a big thank you to ACS for their real-time captioning services today. All right, here are a couple of important Zoom links. Um, if you do need to find some of the hotkeys and Zoom shortcuts, I've got a couple of bit.ly links in here. Those are um, bit.ly slash Zoom shortcuts, um, capital Z in Zoom and capital S in shortcuts. That will um, take you to um, the Zoom Help Center, and um, that takes you specifically to the hotkeys and shortcuts page. So you can find those. And again, I'll put these links into the chat as soon as I'm um, done speaking. Um, and then the Zoom Help Center, I've got this in here on, a, um, oops, looks like I accidentally um, double um, put the wrong, the the wrong URL in here, but the one for um, the Help Center is um, also a bit.ly link. It's bit.ly slash zoom with a capital Z dash help with a capital H. And again, I will put those into the chat for us when I'm done here. All right, um, we're just gonna hit the participant tools real quick. Um, so you can find a list of participants and the participant tools in your participants panel. Uh, that will appear near the top right of your screen and then the chat panel will be near the bottom right on your screen, but if those aren't activated and you're not seeing them, um, in your Zoom toolbar, just click on the word more and there's three little dots and um, a little menu will pop up and you can click on participants or click on chat and those will add those panels to your view. So if they didn't automatically come up when you logged in, um, you can activate those yourself. Um, please do type your comments and questions into the Zoom group chat panel. Um, you can do that as we go 
or you can raise your hand to ask a question. I'll show you where to raise your hand here in just one sec. Um, but be sure to select everyone from the drop down menu in the chat when you're sending a message so that the whole group can see your question. If you would like to view this webinar in full screen, um, kind of near the top middle of the display area, there are um, some expanding arrows and um, the words enter full screen. Go ahead and click on that and that will take you up to full screen. And then if you need to get out of full screen, you can um, click on exit. And again, if you need to do that um, with the keyboard, those will be on the keyboard shortcuts that I mentioned earlier. All right, um, close up into the participant panel tools. Um, you have a microphone button. You can um, mute and unmute yourself with that. Um, you can click on the hand to raise your hand to ask a question. Uh, there are some other tools there. There's a little check mark, it's green, and um, that's to answer yes if we happen to ask a question, or you can click no, which is the red X to answer questions. And then there's a more button here too. Um, if you click on that one, you're gonna find a few um, emoticons. You can give a thumbs up or you can clap. So feel free to use any of those um, while we're speaking. Um, please do keep yourself muted though during the webinar so that we can avoid um, background noise and like listening to each other type and whatnot. So I know a lot of us multitask while we're listening to, to webinars and whatnot. All right, um, last housekeeping item before I introduce Kelly is um, to let you know that this webinar is being recorded and I did start the recording already and you will be able to find those recordings on um, the assessment teaching and learning blog and I've got a bit.ly link for this as well. It's bit.ly slash ignis, that's I-G-N-I-S all in caps, 2019 dash recordings with a capital R. And again, I'll put that into the chat here in just a second if you need to get access to those. Um, you'll also be able to find um, the full schedule on um, the ATL blog as well. All right, oops. I've lost a couple of my questions here. Hold on, let me get out of here. I need to find Kelly's face again here from current slide. Oh. Oh dear. All right, well, sorry, I'm having a technical problem that I did not have when we practiced this. Um, okay, so let me just switch up where I'm bringing you this information from. My bad, everyone. Um, let's see, okay. All right, so here we are. I just need to find my notes for Kelly's intro. Um, so I have um, had the pleasure of working with Kelly for um, several years as um, part of our e-learning council and also as a Quality Matters coordinator. And um, he's just an all-around great guy. And if his hat selection didn't already give it away, Kelly's quite a character. Um, Oh, one thing to note that in addition to presenting our first webinar this year, Kelly has also volunteered to co-host the remaining Ignis webinars with me this year. So you're actually gonna be getting to hear from him um, again next week and throughout our seven weeks of um, presentations. So Kelly is currently the e-learning coordinator at Clover Park Technical College, and he's also adjunct faculty at Tacoma Community College and Grays Harbor College. He is, um, a guy who wears many hats. Um, I think that's why we have this hat, fun hat picture here. And um, one of those hats is providing professional development for faculty in the areas of pedagogy, learning outcome development, and um, assessment. So um, Kelly's got a really big job. Uh, he's also a Canvas community coach and a Canvassador, and he is known to his Panda friends as Agent K, and I don't have a picture of your um, panda avatar, um, Kelly, to share, um, but maybe we can share that in an upcoming webinar. Uh, I'm going to have to get that to you. Yeah, I'll have to. I, I meant to go find it and I forgot. Um, 
I learn something new about Kelly every year when he presents. And um, this year, he let me know that he grew up as a commercial fisherman on Kodiak Island, Alaska. So I found that kind of interesting. Um, he says he has one wife. I, I think that's good, Kelly, that you only have one wife. He has one adopted granddaughter, four children, 18 grandchildren, and three great-grandchildren. So um, your family seems to be growing. And in his spare time, Kelly likes to, oh, wait. Kelly said he never has any spare time, but he said a nap would be really cool. So um, that's a little bit about Kelly. I'm not sure if he'll tell you some more about him um, when he takes over, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him now to wow us with um, some of his Badger how-tos. So Kelly, let me go ahead and stop my screen share, and then um, you can go ahead and grab your slides. And again, my apologies for that little bit of technical trouble there in the middle. And while Kelly's getting set up, I'm gonna put um, those Zoom links into the chat. All righty, hi everybody. Uh, can everybody hear me just fine? I've got you loud and clear, Kelly. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm really glad that Alyssa mentioned that this is a new webinar platform for the State Board and for me. And so please forgive any clumsiness that we uh, might have along the way today. Uh, let me see. Come on. There we go. Um, our agenda, yeah, I got some disclaimers. Everything has to start with disclaimers. This is the 21st century. If necessary, I'm going to talk about creating a Badger account, adding your Badger to your Canvas at the account or the course level, how to award a badge automatically through Canvas module completion, a comparison of Badger and Badger Pro if we get the time, and also if we get the time, a brief intro of Badger Pathways, but I do want to be able to leave time at the end for Q&A. Well, the disclaimers. Uh, I noticed that there's quite a few um, e-learning coordinators, directors, etc., cetera, um, Canvas admins in our group today, but um, while faculty are generally welcome to award badges for thus just their own courses, I, I think it's always a good idea to check with your school about any branding or credentialing concerns. Bottom line is that our colleges hold the authority for any credentials issued by the college. And if you issue one from a course, it's still a credential, even if it's just a badge. So I would run it by them. Um, if you're setting up badges under a department or a program, I think you should be even more careful. Um, one, you know, create a neutral issuer uh, with a neutral issuer email, not assigned to any particular faculty member. Um, as we've all seen, faculty sometimes change a little more often than our programs, though I think we can all think of a few examples where a program was initiated by a faculty member and 30 years later, it, they're both still there. So, but still exercise caution. Um, issuers can only be deleted by Badger support at this time. And we learned this lesson the hard way. We were playing with creating issuers and doing this, and we ended up with about 10 issuers and found out we couldn't make them go away and had to get a hold of Badger su support to do that for us. And they're happy to do that, but be careful in creating those issuers. And don't confuse yourself by saying an instructor will issue the badge. That's not quite right. The instructor awards the badge or sets up the conditions for it to be awarded. The badge issuer actually may be somebody else entirely. And one more disclaimer. I am not an expert. I am still exploring badges and Badger. I'm very excited about the possibilities that Badger and Badging presents. Um, we're basically exploring it at our school first in uh, professional development. I saw in the chat room earlier that others of you are also looking at this as a professional development tool. Um, but eventually we want to expand to including some of our outside expert, uh, outside uh, partners like, for example, at Clover Park, we do a lot of work with the Pierce County Skills Center, and uh, we would like to share badging across with them. 
Kelly, before you go any further, um, we're getting a little bit of clicking from your microphone. Oh. So I don't know um, if there's maybe something moving in your background or if maybe you need to move the mic just a teeny bit further away. Yeah, I had just set it down closer, but maybe I'll, I got it shoved up. Is it still working? Uh, I can hear you all right. I don't know what, I don't know what was causing the clicking. I just thought I would um, interrupt to see if we could okay. um, adjust it real quick. Um, why don't you go ahead for a few more slides and then I'll let you know if I All don't right. say anything, it's fine. Um, th this is a sing along with Mitch presentation. So if you want to join in the fun, have a Canvas classroom ready. Uh, we'll be using it very shortly. A sandbox is handy, but for practice, you can really use any classroom with a quiz in a module. Um, because we will sh show you later, I'll explain how to make all that badging go away if it's a live classroom for this term. In the future, uh, for practicing with uh, badge badger and badging, you really do need a sandbox and a collection of dummy students. So far, my partner here and I have gone through a six or eight uh, sandboxes, and we have a steady stream of dummy students that we use for testing this. And as for where to find dummy students, I'm sorry, but I already have a job. Um, the first thing is you, would, you need to check to verify if badges is included in your Canvas. You do not have to create a Badger account if Badger has been integrated with Canvas at the account level at your school. Again, I noticed a bunch of uh, the Canvas admins in this group, and I suspect that most of you have badges integrated at the school or available in the course. So what you do is you check your course navigation for badges and make sure that badges is in the top menu. And I'm gonna jump out of here real quick. and show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go to settings in one of my sandboxes. I'm gonna look in navigation and I notice, yes, I have badges, but it's down in the lower half of my menu. I'm just going to drag it up to the top half of my menu, scroll down, click save, and now badges is activated in this classroom and available to use. If you're using a live classroom to play today, that's the secret to making your badges and any changes you've made in your course for badges to go away. Drag badges back down to the lower menu and you'll be good to go. It'll turn off any badges you created practicing today. All right. So I'm gonna run a really quick poll here. Do you already have Badger installed in your school's Canvas account or in a Canvas classroom? That will decide what I do next. And go ahead and answer that in the polling uh, panel that hopefully popped up to, for you all. And it popped up just fine, Alyssa. Yep, looks like it's, it's going. We got quite a few answers. Let's see. Are you ready to end? I think we're good. Yeah. 100% response rate. I don't think that has ever happened. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to end the poll and share the results with you here. Give me just one sec. There we go. Okay, so about 30% of you do not have Badger installed in your Canvas account or in a Canvas classroom. And so what we will do is show that piece of this process during this webinar. And that's great. That's part of why we planned on doing this. So to create a Badger account, you want to go to badger.com and then click create account. And so I'm going to actually exit my slideshow again and I will walk you through that from my end. When you go to badger.com, You'll see a screen like this. You can either sign in or create an account. I already have an account for Badger. And so what I'll do is give folks time to go ahead and create an account if you would like to. And then um, I'll log into mine and show you the next piece of this. Because if you don't have Badger installed in your classroom, you'll also want to get the app integrations and 
add integrate that into your Canvas classroom. So I'm going to give folks just a quick second, and maybe um, Alyssa, we should have set up a separate poll. Are you done yet? Um, but if you are done, just go ahead and put it in the chat room. And Okay, you're getting a few duns come in. Just a couple people. I'm done too, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got three done so far. Four. One of the things I didn't mention, though, it's on the slide I had up. Uh, use your school email as your username, um, like so many third party tools that are integrated with Canvas. Um, your school email becomes an authenticator. I think folks are probably still um, logging in. Uh, we've only got three or four responses in the chat, but you're probably okay to move on. All righty, so I'm gonna log in right now. And uh, you'll see that, you know, when I do log in, my backpack's in there with the badges that I've earned already from through Badger. Uh, but you'll wanna go up to account, click the drop down arrow, and then click on app integrations and you'll get some choices for app integrations um, and the one you want to choose is canvas lti and when you pick canvas lti you get a consumer key a shared secret and a co uh, configuration URL, just like you do with so many integrations that go into Canvas. So what you do is you take the first one, your consumer key, click the copy button. I will go into my demo course. I'll go to settings. I'll go to apps, view app configurations, add an app. And so this is um, by URL. I'm going to give it a name. I just, that's inventive and creative, huh? And there's my consumer key. I'll paste that in. Tab back over to app integrations and copy my shared secret. Go back into my classroom and paste that puppy in there. Go back to app integrations again and copy my URL. Go back into course details and paste that URL in here. And as you guys saw earlier when I showed you where Badges lives in this course, I already have uh, Badges Badger integrated. So I'm not going to hit the submit button, but that is your next step. I'm going to hit the cancel button. So I hope that that worked for everybody. It went quick, but the information is in the slideshow and we'll make sure that that slideshow is available to everybody along with the recording um, when we're all done here. And um, as I said earlier, in navigation, I have drugged my badges up to the top. Once you've installed your badges, you may see that it's already in the top, but check for it. If it's down below, drag it up there. All right. Let's do this again. So the next step is preparing a Canvas course. Um, select or create a Canvas course. The course has to be organized use, using modules and at least mo one module must include a requirement based on a quiz and make sure that badges link is displayed. And so we've already been in my classroom. I'm going to go back in there again, and I'm going to show you what I did in this practice classroom. It is set up the same way the other five uh, Badger practice classrooms were set up by me. What I did was I created four modules, and in each module, I put a quiz, skill one, skill two, et cetera. And then for the requirements, I'm going to go over here and click the ellipsis, click edit, and I wanna add a requirement that my students must complete the quiz that's in there and score at least 10 out of 15. 
then I click update that module. Then I'm going to go to the very next module, edit it, add a requirement, the same thing, the quiz, score at least 10 out of 15. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm going to tell you folks that I kept this as absolutely simple as possible. Uh, there's only one item in the modules, their name skill one, two, three, et cetera. And those quizzes are exactly the same. And there's only three items in each quiz. And you want to do that. If you're practicing badging, you don't need to practice complicated course design. What you want to do is be able to practice the mechanics of setting up badges in your classroom. So keep it as simple as you possibly can. You're going to uh, have a lot more fun doing it. All right, I have set up my modules. You will notice that my quizzes, so let's go and take a quick look at my quizzes. Um, come on. I just have uh, three questions. How many blahs are in the instruction for this quiz? Because being lazy, I just wrote blah, blah, blah in the instructions. The next question is, what is one plus one? And the third one is, what is the price of tea in China? In other words, keep it very simple because you're practicing badging. You're not practicing instructional design. Does if you're using a live course, the only requirement for awarding a badge is that you have used the modular structure of Canvas and that you have a quiz that is set as a requirement with a minimum score required to achieve your badge. So um, I'm going to give everybody just a couple seconds if they're trying to set up a course. Um, if you would monitor the chat room for me, Alyssa, and let me know where folks are with that. Yep. I'm going to bring the um, slideshow back. I'm going to make sure that I don't have something I should be doing on the very next slide in this. All right. Good. How's everybody doing out there? So as you can see, setting up the course is really easy, but what you're going to be amazed at is how easy it is then to assign the badge as an award for a student or participant's achievement of the requirement that you set. So I'm going to click on badges. And the very first step to adding badges to as an award for achievement in one of your courses is to pick an issuer. And again, if you don't have an issuer and 30% of you didn't have Badger installed in your classroom, you have the option of creating an issuer. Um, what I would suggest is just like this top issuer you see on the screen, preface the name of your issuer with the word test or something. No, the name doesn't have to be clear to you, but the name has to be clear to Badger support when you ask them to delete that issuer later when you no longer need it. So you can say, go in there and delete my test issuer and they'll see that and they'll be able to do it. I actually created an issuer just for this presentation and I named that issuer Ignis. Is that uh, creative or what? So how many people are with me out there? I haven't seen anybody um, check in that they are um, working along with you. We do have a question from um, Bellingham Tech. It says, can badges be awarded to students and staff? Can, can, um, 
badges can be awarded to anybody who is a participant in a Canvas course. We use our Canvas courses for professional development for staff and faculty. Um, we even use it for outside groups who want we are training for whatever reason in uh, and using Canvas to do so. So badges can be awarded to any user in Canvas. Um, I'm not sure anybody's playing along with me, but what I'm going to do is then is go ahead and select this Ignis issuer that I had already created. And once you select an issuer, you will see all of the modules listed that do have a required quiz in them. And so I've got my skill one, my skill two, my skill three, and my skill four. So I go over here to the column that says badge. I click the drop down arrow. And I choose create a new badge. Okay, come on. Ah, why am I getting difficulties with this? I'm wondering if my um, browser is just being slow, but it's not letting me create a new badge. Hmm. Kelly, I'm not sure. Um, where Moria um, from Highline, she says she just encountered um, an error with her Canvas instance. So maybe, um, and Craig Goodman is saying his is out too. So maybe we're having difficulty with um, Badger at yeah, this so I'm time. Wondering if maybe it's a, a problem on Badger's end. I'm going to try something real quick here. I'm going to uh, change issuers real quick. Okay. And just see if that makes any difference. Okay. Um, if you can't get it to work from here because it's not cooperating, maybe we could go into the help pages and you could show um, the process from their um, support pages. Well, luckily, one of the other things that I did was, I, I, and I mentioned earlier, I've, this is my sixth practice classroom oh, good. with badges. <laughs> so what I can do is pop into one of those and show you what works. And, uh, and what it looks like when it's done. Um, when you select a badge, you're given an opportunity to either uh, have Badger give you, pick a design that Badger already has in a large file of badge designs, or you can simply create your own by dragging an image into a spot that is reserved for that in that badge. You give the badge a name and you save it and it's now attached to you know, Ignis skill won that particular module in that particular quiz. What we did for our badges, we looked around to see if we could find somebody, a graphic designer to uh, find us a um, easily editable badge design for our school. And then we started looking at some examples out there in the industry and realized all we had to do was take one of our school logos and size it appropriately because you don't need an editable, a text editable badge design because what you do when you create a badge, you add an image, you create text telling what that badge is for and bada boom bada bing, you actually have a badge. It's really easy and I will go in and show you some badges in one of my other courses. So this was one of the very first ones we did. Again, four modules. You'll be amazed to learn that the test in each of those modules is exactly the same as the one that I'm working with. And we just used um, designs picked from Badger's uh, library of designs. And the type of badges to complete a module, um, because I've already created the badge, the only option here is to delete it. But this is one of my later slides, so I can show the progress of my students in here, my dummy students. 
It lists all of my students and which badges that they've earned. I have leaderboard enabled in here so I can see who's doing what, where, and when. And I have the ability to do look at some analytics. Yes, the analytics are rather uninspiring because it's one course, four modules, and 10 test students. But as an instructor, you do have analytics available in your um, classroom from badging. Um, if your school installs Badger Pro, um, your Canvas admins will also have analytics available account-wide under the um, admin panels in Canvas. So, I'm going to go back and just see if something's going off my Ignis, maybe it will let me do that badge right now. It could have been just temporary, we're going to see. Yeah, Chris said he refreshed his and that it was working. So hopefully it'll work for you this time. Awesome. Week. It is working this time. So this is skill two. I'll pick a skill two badge that I had already created. If I wanted to create a brand new badge, I would click create new badge. I would give the badge a name. Um, Ignis skill one. How many typos did I put in that? If I want to upload a picture, I can just click there. I'll go into my documents. I'll go into um, quickly into logos, Clover Park, grab my badge logo. Uh oh. And drag it into there. Come on, get out of my way. Huh. We'll try this one more time. I haven't had to do this for a while, so that might be part of the problem. I would really like to show you one. All right. We'll just uh, use an image studio badge. We'll pick a Canadian maple one. And we'll make it a maple leaf fall color. There. Now, badge, you'll notice badge description, badge criteria. Um, you can provide a considerable amount of megadata and actually Steve Gantz on the state board was showing us at the wacky conference um, badges with multiple pages of metadata that will tell somebody who is verifying that somebody actually achieved a badge and what the qualifications were for that badge that there's an incredible amount of information that can be stored in metadata for your badge so I'm just going to create that quick badge Well, it's giving me a hard time here. So I'll just fall back on the old ones. Evidence, you can enter the evidence when you write it in, when you create the badge, that will show up here. And the type is module completion. If you're tracking external awards by creating uh, badging pathways, you can click this button and that will open that up and make it available to you. Now, the testing part, that's also very fun. Well, what we did was we put five test students in here. We kept it very simple. You could even log in as your test students. Again, we kept it simple. Uh, username student one, login, uh, password student one, but the easiest way is just to click the students, do act as user, and now I can go in here, open this quiz up as my test student, and take my quiz. And there were uh, three blahs. One plus one does not equal 22, but it's close. And what is the price of tea in China? Just right. Submit my quiz. I've achieved 15 out of 15 points. So 
I should have been awarded a badge. Now, one of the things that my partner here and I have noted is that sometimes there's a little lag between earning the badge and when it shows up in badges in your classroom. But I'm going to, um, ah, so it wasn't that much of a lag. There's the badge that I earned. And if I stop acting as the user and I go back to being the instructor, I can check on progress and see that my first student had achieved the first badge. Um, does anybody have any questions at this point on this in the chat room? Because I went through some of this really quick. Kelly, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat um, other than Chris was asking. Um, Chris Powell from um, Western Washington was asking if the picture you were trying to grab earlier was a JPEG or a PNG file. It's a JPEG and I, I don't know, I didn't want to waste too much time messing with it so I just moved on. But um, we, what we did was we grabbed our, our simplest logo for our school. It's just a purple block with four letters in it, white letter C, P, and then in, in the top row and TC in the bottom. It made it easy to be very recognizable in our badge. You might want to talk to your public relations folks at your school and see what they suggest. Kelly, right. we do have a question if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Um, Bellingham um, Technical College is asking, so is the badge seen in Canvas or do you have to um, see it, do it in Badger? The badge is seen in Canvas. We just, um, in this example here, we do see the badge here in Canvas. And if it was a fancier badge, we would see that fancier badge here. But your students will, just like you, automatically have a Badger account with um, a backpack where their badges will be collected. Now, I've heard of a few times where your students may need to go in and actually initiate their account in Badger, but it should be working automatically just like um, authentication with Panopto or most of our Canvas integrations. So um, yeah, they'll be able to see the badges there in, um, in Canvas. Steve Gans, or somebody else just showed me how they can print a um, certificate for that badge too, but I haven't had a chance to follow that up. Does that answer your question? It does, but um, I think they have a follow-up question. Um, okay. They wanted to know if it, it doesn't show in the Canvas profile, right? It can show in the Canvas profile. Um, uh, we just were helping somebody in the community about that. Um, if your students have a badge, backpack in Badger. That Badger backpack can be attached to their user profile in Canvas and then their badges will show up there in their profile. And I'm pretty sure I just saw that in mind doing something else. My badges. Oh, that's new. Well, it's not showing up right now because maybe I have not clicked something. But yes, their badges will show up in their profile in Canvas, which is, you know, really handy and nice. So, um, you know, because one of the nice things about badges is that sense of instant gratification that a micro-credential gives a participant or a student. And being able to ha have those shown in their account, in their profile, in Canvas, is pretty cool, actually. Um, we have a couple more questions, if you don't mind me derailing you. <laughs> nope, that's all right. Okay, so um, security, from um, Bellevue um, says that they have Badger set up at the admin level and she's asking if faculty use badges in their classroom, do they need a new key and secret and do faculty need to create a new issuer on the badge site for each class they teach? No, if they've set it up at the account level, it should show up in the course navigation menu for every course in that Canvas instance. They would just need to enable it by moving it up into... By, by just going into yeah. navigation, navigation and dragging it yeah. up to the top, yes. Okay, and then her follow-up question is about creating a new issuer on the badge site for each class, and I think you're probably going to say no to that one. Okay, what's the, do they need to create a new issuer for each course? Is that what she's asking? Uh-huh. 
Okay, yeah. I would exercise caution in creating issuers. Those issuers won't just be attached to that course, they'll be attached to that badge account in that Canvas instance. So um, if you're a school, well, say just even a smaller school like ours with 840 courses online in Canvas and everybody decided to create an issuer, you can see the nightmare that you're starting to create. Um, I think that if you're the Canvas admin for your school, you might want to take a lead role and create a school issuer and then coordinate with faculty for creating program or course specific issuers uh, just to try and keep that more manageable and not just as a control freak as the Canvas admin, but to make it easier for the faculty who are developing badges and, and issuing them to their, awarding them to their students. Does that make sense? She says, yes, thanks. Okay. Um, we have one additional question. Um, sure. From uh, Barson Akar. Um, says, I have just joined the meeting, so I'm sorry if this was addressed earlier. I set up the badges, students completed the assignment, but Canvas does not sync the badges on student Canvas profiles. As a faculty, what do I need to do to make sure the badges sync with student accounts automatically or manually? Um, I'm going to have to research that because I haven't set that up yet, so I, I will find out. We just went to my badges in profiles and I'm not seeing any of the badges that I'm earned. So I know there's a, a separate step to that. If uh, Melissa, since you're seeing the chat, yep. if you could jot down his name, I will follow up with him and get him the instructions for doing that. Okay, Jess is reporting that she has seen that happen, um, that she's had that experience as well. So um, that that glitch has happened. So okay. uh, maybe it's a canvas. And, and it could be, or it could be a badger glitch. I don't know. So, but I will follow up with folks so that they get an answer. Okay. And it looks like Jess is saying that um, SBCTC is already planning to follow up on that with Concentric Sky. Um, oh, because good. They've, they've had some problems. With Thank it. you, Jess. Yeah. And then um, Craig Goodman has a question. Um, Craig asks, are there any privacy issues with providing Badger with student info? Um, does the student need to give permission or do they need to create an account? Accounts should be created automatically based on their enrollment in a course. Um, I have seen where sometimes they, they have to go in and create an account. And I just think that's a bug with, between Badger and Canvas, uh, between that integration the authentication and the integration. Um, I don't see that there's a security issue. I remember reading somewhere in Badger's documentation, and I have a link to that included in this uh, slideshow, but I've seen in their documentation that the only ID that is used by Badger is the student school email address, same as you as an issuer or as a teacher, you would enter your email address. That does not follow the badges. It's not included in the metadata for the badges as far as I know. So I, do, I don't see that there's a security issue there for students. Jess, am I right? You guys have explored this quite a bit more than I have. Um, well, you do have to create an account in Badger.io. Um, you use the email, so, you know, students would use the email addresses associated with Canvas um, because they have to create a password. And so that's the issue is through Badger.io is where you're able to share your badges. You can develop collections of badges. Right and you know print the certificates whatever you want to do with them but you actually do have to go into badger io and create that password uh, okay. in order to do all of that so um that the user does exist across both platforms but to really do anything with the badges you there is a separate account there. and that might be why the well my i have a separate account so i don't know why it's not showing up my canvas account but you guys are following up on that piece that's the side of it we haven't explored heavily yet so i'm glad that you guys have thanks jess i really appreciate that i did you see any security issues associated with it then 
No, I can um, pop into my email real quick. I know when you're awarded a badge, you do receive an email uh, yes. letting you know. And I know there's some fine print there. Um, I've gotten some initial, initial feedback from piloting that the fine print's a little confusing. And that might be the piece that would address Craig's question. So I'll, I'll pop into my email and see if I can find anything right now. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Jess. Can, can you hear me? We yeah. can. Okay, sorry. So my question, it's not really security. It's about privacy issue because you're sending info out to a third party. Uh, I, I just I just worry when we do that with student data, even an email address, but it probably somehow identifies the class that the student is taking. So I just want to make sure I'm following the legalities of of this type of info. We've had conversations at our campus about this. We'd love to use this tool, but we would like sort of the legal it's okay to use it type thing. So that's that's. I can take that offline, of course, as a bigger discussion, but it's not a security issue. It's a privacy issue for the students because when they, when you said they could go into Badger and look into a backpack, that kind of raised a flag for me. There's data being exported out of Canvas to a third party. So Absolutely. It's just like using Google Docs or anything. And I know a lot of schools have been concerned with using, you know, right. Google Drive for classroom activities because of uh, security issues. I think as a system, we're going to have to explore this just a little bit okay. further. Okay, that and sounds sounds great. I'll, I'll, I'll mute myself again. Thanks so much. Oh, no, I appreciate, I appreciate it. It's a valid issue, so thank you. Anything else, Alyssa? Uh, let me look. I saw a new message come in, but I haven't read it yet. I'm trying to get to the bottom here. Let's see. Um, Kurt Pavia wants to know if Badger is FERPA compliant. There are check boxes in the badging integration that you can check if you wish to enable students to see each other's badges that have been earned. And the default is to have those unchecked. Otherwise, uh, as far as I know, students cannot see each other's badges. Uh, you, when you go into student view, you might have noticed when I did my quick demo, I, I took the test as a test student, as one of my students. And then I went to Badger. I only saw my results, the badges that I have earned. But I know that when setting it up, you are able to check a checkbox that would allow all the students to see the progress of all the other students and I'm not comfortable with ever checking that checkbox so um, keep it in mind for yourself if you're a teacher or using it for professional development if you're the canvas admin trying to roll this out at your school advise people not to check those checkboxes okay and Kelly um, since we have a little pause here I'm just gonna tell you we have about seven minutes left yeah I know I'm gonna burn through my slides really quick no um, worries. Any of you who, who use one of a live classroom, as I said earlier, uh, don't panic, don't forget your talents, just drag badges down into the lower part of your navigation menu and it will remove any evidence of that as far as your students are concerned. Um, I'm not gonna do Badger versus Badger Pro. Um, I will tell you in Badger Pro, you get um, account analytics, which is excellent. Um, Badger Pathways, we were hoping we might have a little time, but we got some excellent questions, so uh, we didn't. But Alyssa is going to check to see if there's room in her schedule to add a follow-up Ignis presentation at the end of the season where we'll explore Badger Pathways. Um, and on that slide, it says, Ask your Canvas admin to install Badger Pro. It's really rather simple and worth it because of all the other things. Um, one of the things I'll go in real quick, uh, Pathways is really awesome. This was our first test pathway. It actually involves four courses. And if you're working from left to right, uh, what I'm circling here with my cursor is one course, two badges that are earned with a completion badge. Uh, called the Kahuna One.
This is a second course with four badges. And if you earn all four of those badges, it gives you a Kahuna 2. And then Kahuna 3 down here is a uh, third class. I guess there's only three classes in here. It only has one badge. If you collect all of these badges, you have earned the award of the big Kahuna badge. And when you set up pathways like this, um, it will track who's completed it, uh, what issuers are involved. With these pathways, you can also incorporate badges that are issued by an outside entity. Let's say there's a skill set that you are going to award a badge for as part of a pathway, but another school or an industry offers that same uh, learning opportunity and a badge, you can incorporate that badge into your pathway. Uh, so the this is where I'm really excited about Canvas, I mean about Badger. And uh, I know that Jess Thompson in her Accessibility 101 version 2.0, uh, she has created a pathway just within that course. She has the, the component modules. Each one you can earn a badge when you complete it. If you complete all the modules in her Accessibility 101, you earn an overall completion badge. So it's it really has a lot of potential, especially with professional development where you're offering a series of courses. Um, this slide contains some additional resources. Again, we'll make the slideshow available to you. Here's my contact information for those of you who don't know me. Um, I'm Kelly Musin at cptc.edu and there's my telephone number and I'm talking for just a second so that you can write it down. And any final questions? Well, could we just do a quick show of hands? Like, you, Could you just check um, the yes or raise your hand if you're interested in exploring badges further and doing the Encore uh, presentation with Pathways? at the end of um, the Ignis season. So we'd be like um, end of June, or maybe we could do it middle of July. So if you'll just let me know, a couple people said yes in the chat, but I'm just interested of those um, to know of those that are here, how many of you would be interested in attending a follow-up session on this? So um, looks like we've got five or six people. Jess needs to run. Okay, bye Jess. Okay, so Kelly, it looks like um, we'll, we may need to give um, some consideration to the timing on that and get that figured out. We've got quite a few people saying that they'd be interested in exploring pathways and kind of, you know, continuing on this journey and learning a little bit more. Yeah, I got the participant window open and I'm seeing them. There, there's a few in there, so it might be Yeah, and some people have raised their hand and checked the yes button, so um, there's some additional ones up in the participant panel. All right, so... Um, I will stop sharing. That's great. I was just going to ask you to do that. And you can take over. All right. I just need one second here to um, just tell you about next week's presentation. Yeah, so um, we're going to continue with Ignis um, next week. We have William Jackson from Everett Community College presenting, and he's presenting on student engagement in the internet age. So um, join us on, I think it's the 25th is next week's date. I probably, yeah. Oh, is it April? Oh, sorry, it's the 18th. I've got, I'm ahead of myself on my dates. Okay, so today's the 11th. Join us on um, April 18th um, for this one. And then um, you can find the full schedule on the ATL blog, like I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. And I did put that in link into the chat for you. So you guys, you can get um, to the blog and find that information. It will be about a week before we get the recording and um, materials posted from Kelly's webinar, and um, I will apologize to Kelly because I said his name wrong at the beginning. I always get it backwards, so Kelly, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't hear it. <laughs> okay, then I didn't do it. If you didn't hear it, it didn't happen. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, um, so here's our contact information um, again, and um, Kelly already shared his. Here's mine as well. Uh, feel free to contact either one of us for more information about Ignis or about Kelly's um, 
badging presentation in general. And then again, thank you for the captions today to ACS. And um, just a note here to end us um, that all of this material is um, open for you to use. It's got a Creative Commons um, license on it. So please feel free to um, use it um, for whatever your needs are. And I'm going to go ahead and end the recording now. If anybody has additional um, questions, please um, feel free to ask those before we adjourn.